Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, and welcome back to Joe on Joe. It's the only podcast where I, Joe Slepsky, watch every episode of G.I. Joe in sequential order and comment on it mystery science style, always with a friend, always with a guest. Actually, not always. Sometimes I do a solo. That's a lie. I just lie to my listeners for the first <laughs> time julius but this week i'm excited because i have a special guest uh it's a friend from out here in california he has been clamoring clamoring to get on the show for this specific episode this is the episode because he loves this episode and so i was so happy to get you it's as an a, all cobra episode it's, it, it really is it's i'm so happy to get you on here as part of the serpentor crew we're getting together to watch part five next week. It's going to be a jamboree this, of all the... Serpentor the, time! Exactly. All the Serpentor people. So let me introduce today's guest. Did you he ever is have a, the Serpentor toy? Uh, let me introduce oh, you sorry. first, mister. <laughs> I did have... In fact, I still do. We can bust it out. I'll bust oh. it out. We'll have it... Bef- as we watch the show, I'll have it sitting on here so we can comment on Serpentor. Okay. So Julius Pantera is a... Uh, in his words, he's a bon vivant. <laughs> He is a man about town. He's a carnival act, and he's a rube. He's I also go a fo- back and forth. He's also a very talented photographer, and I say that having seen thank a lot of your you, work. You, you shot you. a lot of the shows and stuff that we've done. Thank you. You're a very talented photographer, camera operator out here in California, and he is here with us today, Mr. Julius Pantera. Welcome to Joe on Joe. I feel honored to be on the show. This and we I to command. Talk about Oh, Dick Gautier. Dick oh. Gautier. Yeah, thanks for being on the show, man. You, you, uh, we were at an event or something hanging out, and I was talking about Serpentor was on his way, and you, you looked at me and go, "I need to be there for part four. Yeah, that was it. Like yeah. that was the conversation. Yeah, yeah that, because that's the best one. It's the perfect mix of yeah. everything. And I hadn't even at that point, I hadn't even actually gone through my rewatch yet, so yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, it was foggy as to exactly yeah. what part four was all about. And it, I was like, why is he so in love with part four? Like, I love the Sprintor stuff. Yeah. But you were zeroed in. Well, because it's all Cobra. Okay. And it, and it has this 1950s mad scientist uh, feel. Totally. And then, of course, the, the, the muck monster, which, you know, will... Is amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Who looks a little bit like um, <laughs> the Heap. Yeah. You remember the Heap? Yeah, I remember comics? the Heap. Yeah, like the man yeah, I remember the Heap. Um, yeah. yeah. Also looks a little bit like how... The man thing was drawn on the cover of Marvel Two and One issue really? number one. Just throwing that out there. I have to see that. Kids I'm, can I'm... reference that. That's to my in my head. That's what I'm seeing when I see. I'm also actually seeing quite a bit. Um, well, I, I the, who, do you who read wrote Astro who? City? Yes. Yes. Do you know? Um, the, it's been a while. It's but the member of of the, of the Fantastic Four version from Busey. Yeah, Astro the, City. The, the, the the something. I forgot the name. Yeah, of the, the family. The first family. I think. The, they call yes, them. the first family. Their their version of the thing. Yeah, they do have a version. Yeah, it looks like this monster. Really? Oh, totally. It's been a while since I read that the the, the, the books. I love. You oh, know, yeah. it was a great Astro book. Yeah. Um, so Julius, pick up Astro City, boys and girls. Julius, you uh, so you live in LA now. You yes. said you were born in New Jersey. I was born in Secaucus, New Jersey. Secaucus, shout out! And then you uh, said you kind of, kind of cut your teeth in New Orleans. What, yeah, I was. Like, you know, what was that childhood or no, no, no? It was like later on. I, I, pre- I just like, you know, I grew up in Jersey. You know, I, I went back and forth in New York just mm-hmm. to hang out. But it was like. Uh, and I just wanted to get the hell out of New Jersey. So, so you you listened to Bruce Springsteen's advice, <laughs> pretty much. And got out. When I finally was able to go, I I got out, and I and it's like every now and then I just think, man, I should have like ran away earlier and gone to uh, live in New Orleans. Yeah, you're you're a Springsteen song come to life. And how long were you in New Orleans? About like say six years. Yeah. I went there, like you know the. Um, the explanation was I went to school, but really I just wanted to go to New Orleans. Well, who doesn't want to go to New Orleans? You know. uh, I'm on record. We've got a big New Orleans connection on the show. Like, oh, uh, hello. Uh, multiple, multiple multiple guests. Have, have bon temps brûlés. Yeah, and, uh, so I'm on record. I love New Orleans. Um, so where were you living when you were had your G.I. Joe experience? Like when you were, when oh, you in were Jersey. Watching, you were in Jersey. Oh yeah, I was that? I was a big fan of the cartoon. I didn't even know about about the I knew about the comic book, but I didn't know like the differences. So now you're a bigger fan of the comics, but I, you, I still love the T V show. Sure. I, obviously. But so so you watched it so you watched it growing up. Oh, I watched, watched it religiously. religiously. We all yeah. watched it. Did you have kid. the toys? No. I had He Man figures. By the time like uh, uh G.I. Joe 
was like expansive. Right. Uh, I already had too many He Man, so it was like I couldn't. Start. It was, yeah, yeah. You know, it, was, it was like one of those things. It was. So it, it, it was, was a strange. It was, it was very much. I think for for most people that I know, you know, growing up, and and you know, most parents had a budget, or, or, yeah. or, or at least you had a mental budget, so you could kind of focus on one toy line. Yeah, it was strange because I went from He Man, mm-hmm. and then after they stopped He Man, I was like. You know, I really had nothing. You know, I, I, yeah. I had Atari and Nintendo, and but then I started buying Ninja Turtles, so I totally missed out oh, okay. on GI Joe. But I loved the. Fi- I was like, I knew uh, one kid who had like all the the later on GI Joe, yeah. but it's still yeah. not the original GI sure. Joe. And so for me, it's like I can't really buy GI Joe because these are characters I don't know. Like I, I wanted like Snake Eyes, Cobra Commander. Yeah, but you know, the I, later at the point you, they were at uh, in the later runs, I think it was like eighty six. The characters yeah. were too crazy. They weren't. Yeah. They weren't the core ones that you were Ninja watching. Force. Ninja Force. Yeah. Nin- Space Command. For me, for me, when I saw, I remember seeing Ninja Force on the stands, and that was absolutely when I was still, I was still playing Joe, I was still collecting Joe. I think, I believe I put it away the summer before I went. Uh, <coughs> I'm pretty positive it was the summer before I went into high school. Yeah, and that's when I like put him away like i don't think i had been playing with him much but i still kind of had him out i was like i didn't want to let it go you know do you still have the cards or did you just the, open the them card up? the cards yeah like oh the, yeah yeah i don't have all of them but i've got a big stack so you would like cut cut it oh yeah yeah they're sitting in the other room i'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get that and yeah. i'll bring that with serpentor in here oh. <laughs> um and it was like i remember you know making a ritual out of it like i did one big final play battle you yeah know, i was probably 13 or 12 or something at the time one of the one of the distinct things i remember of of that year and and maybe if we maybe if we looked at the release dates, this was wrong. But I absolutely remember seeing Ninja Force on the shelves and saying to myself, "I think I'm too old for this," because it, it, it just was, was like there was neon and it was just yeah. Was, they I, just I was like, I, you know what? I think I'm gonna. It's time to go. Yeah, like, I love it, and I've read the comic, and I still watch the cartoon. But I was like, it's, yeah, weren't they doing like glow in the dark figures and all yeah, that? Stuff? Just were, like weird stuff. Yeah, it was just getting real it, sci-fi-y and, yeah, and, and then and fantasy-y. And then like all of a sudden, it's like yeah. By that time, I was paying attention to it, but it's like you know, I was like by this time, I was I'm just reading comic books. I haven't picked up the GI Joe comic books yet. Okay, but you know, it just you know, I was. But it's like, yeah, it's like I said, it's like, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing I never did pick up G.I. Joe because now it's just like it's so sure. ridiculous. Well, you know what's you know what's fun, though? Um, going back and doing this and, 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 and researching and just learning more, you know, and I'm not uh, digging in and like becoming an encyclopedia because there, there's yeah. some really great, really amazing, great Joe fans out there that yeah. really know all oh, this stuff. I've seen some of them. Yeah. There, they did. There was a core. I don't want I don't want to slam the toy line because there there always was and this is what I've seen in looking back going oh and this year they did this or in that year they did that there was always a core group of actual real Joes that would have stayed in that would have fit well in the original group yeah it's just that they were outnumbered slowly yeah. by the more the sillier yeah. you know the sillier the crazier they kind of outnumbered and, and flashied it, but but when you look closer, you're like, oh wow, they really they were still doing a SWAT specialist, and they yeah. were doing this kind of specialist and that kind of specialist, yeah. and then they were doing ninjas and 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 you know <laughs> hi, hybrid you know I, I, uh, hybrid so- cobra soldiers things I, like that. Dude, like there's some stories that Larry Hammer like uh, having to do with the comic books, like Larry Hammer. When he was like given, like you know, like oh, he's like, given Battle Force two thousand. He purposely killed he, half. He, of yeah, he, yeah, like he would purposely sabotage. <laughs> yeah, he he's did. like, I, what, what is this ridiculous think, crap? If memory serves, I think half of Battle Force two thousand died on the first mission, or like issue number two or is something. He, he, like he wrote them out really quickly. Is he? I guess in comic books you could get away with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, he's. I mean, I, I would think that he contributed so much to what. That toy line was that they that the well, guys put, in charge he, would have Hasbro would have given him the leeway, you know. Like I, if, he, I, if he said, "Hey, I'll well, put he, him in the he, comic," but he, he pretty much I don't want to use him. Well, uh, in terms of characters and story wise, he created. Oh yeah, yeah, he wrote. wrote I think, everything. No, no, but like he, the whole concept was that GI Joe was initially based on his idea of a reworked shield. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, he had like character designs and and yeah. that, that right that that and really when you look at those character designs, they actually resemble uh the uh long range recon patrol that he he ended up bestowing on Snake Eyes in yeah. the comic book. Yeah. So a lot of those dudes oh, Snake he kept, Eyes. like he kept that idea and that was the LRRP that he was later. Correct. Yeah. Snake Eyes, I have to make this it's like this is what I why I like the comic book more than the cartoon now is oh, like yeah. Snake Eyes is just too cool of a character, oh, yeah. and then when I see Snake Eyes on the cartoon, it's like, and then the comic book, 
Yeah, you know? I mean, we've talked about this a lot on, on Joe and Joe. Um, I, I, he's my he's always will be. He's my favorite because, yeah. but he's my favorite because of the comic book, not because yeah. of what I give him on the show. Because on the show, it's hard. He's a mute dude with no face. But he did have a good. They, he did have a good arc in that in that initial um, the miniseries, miniseries with series. him and Shipwreck. No, 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 had, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. The one where he uh, oh, it's when he's trapped with Duke. No, when he uh, gets kidnapped with Duke. No, no, no. Uh, the, oh, the, the matter tra- uh, right like, when he gets and like he's radiated. radiated yeah, and yeah, all yeah, and that's snow. a great. That's a great totally story arc. A great hundred percent. Like I'm like, well, what about this awesome time? Yeah. What about that awesome time? Yeah. No, this other awesome time. Yeah, no, this. I one. totally agree with you. But on the day to day average shows, oh, yeah. he just shows up usually as like a weapon. You know, like like in, yeah. in a battle, he shows up to to punch someone and then he's gone. There's never like I would I would give. I would give anything to see a Snake Eyes centric episode where like they really dug in and were like, and that's why I like GI Joe. This Resolute. is Snake Eyes, you know, that's, like, and that's what they never did. I, that's why I like GI Joe Resolute, uh, that uh, cartoon mm-hmm. mi- web series that yeah. like, was written by Warren Ellis, and also Renegades. Yeah, yeah, the newer stuff. Yeah, the newer yeah. stuff's cool. We're I I do think this show is going to cover that. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, eventually, you know, once we run yeah. out of this and all that. I'm uh, kind of angry that they ended Renegades. I would have loved to have seen that. Sadly, cartoons are about toys. And yeah. obviously, this one heavily is about toys. Oh, yeah. It made me and, want to buy the these toys. these days, oh, yeah. we've, heard so many, uh, we've heard of so many really good cartoon shows that get canceled because there's not enough toys selling to support it. You know, So it's not like that show itself is was not worthy of carrying mm-hmm. on or, or whatever. It's just yeah. that... You know, kids aren't. I, I would think. Do kids? Might, I would think it might have something to do with. Do uh, kids still buy like the well, newer GI Joe stuff? No, well, not. I mean, there isn't. There isn't a ton of really new stuff. They do a lot of stuff for collectors. Yeah, it's like the He Man. Uh, yeah, the new and it's a lot of anniversary stuff to to get the old R dollars, like the yeah. old, old man dollars. Um, it it honestly might have might really have something a lot to do with the fact that we've been in military actions for the last seventeen years. Yes, right, but like close sixteen years. Yeah, two thousand one. Yeah, but when GI Joe came out, it was it was still after you know you had Vietnam and, and yeah, but Vietnam. we were out, but we were out of that. We were out of Vietnam for uh, close to it was like eight years. Eight I think. years. Yeah, we were about we eighty two. Yeah, we were out of Vietnam for about eight years, and we there was no major military. Uh, um, yeah, and 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 if you look at the rise in popularity of Joe, super popular, super popular. Yeah, they may have gone a little silly, but then we went into the Gulf War. Yeah, and that's kind of when that's kind of ties in with when GI Joe lost its popularity, right? Yeah, the, they, they tried time. to do revivals of the '90s, and those revivals, were, Sergeant Savage, Sergeant Savage. Yeah, oh, and, what a and blasphemy! They were, they were garbage. And then there was um, there was one revival that I I don't think it was the Sergeant Savage stuff, but it was. Um, was it GI Joe Extreme? Oh yeah, yeah. Because I have the comic books of them, and they're in, but they're not. It's not Joe and Cobra. It's no. like Joe and Claw or something. Yeah, it's and we will. It's a, it's we, a weird. It's we a might weird, cover that. I, I've been a, I've been researching it. It's a weird it. comic. Book. Yeah, I've been researching it. We like, might, did did Frank Miller create that one, or did he just get hired? No, but he I mean he may have done some of the covers because it was came out through Dark Horse. And yeah, Frank Frank did a ton of stuff for Dark Horse, yeah. so he may have been on the covers for that. Like the, the, uh, you know what he I think he was on the covers for that. Yeah, I did, I remember it was like a, it was a figure of a soldier. Yeah, and, and the flag draped the around him. Yeah. Yes. It's a very iconic. Uh, it is. Uh, the sh- comics are terrible, though. Uh, there were there were two miniseries. This is this is the stuff I do remember. There were two miniseries. I think it was called Claw. It was, it was weird because it was almost like it was the story, but it wasn't. It was like it, it was like. Um, and we, we will cover this on an episode, so I, I don't want to yeah, get yeah, too yeah. deep into it now. But like, stay lead, tuned, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the leader had a mask. Actually, almost looked like Darklon. <laughs> which, I don't know if you remember Darklon from the show. He was a really later enemy. Was he that was, uh, the, the DIC show? He was on the DIC show. That's yeah. why. And they used him in the comic actually a lot because he mm-hmm. kind of supplanted Destro as people liked Destro a little more. You needed someone to be more evil. Yeah. Um, but he kind of had a Darklonish mask. But I'm like, if you're gonna do a, if you're gonna do a bad guy <laughs> with a full face mask, why didn't you just do Cobra? Like just. You know, like do something different, yeah. and it, yeah, it was terrible. So I will table that for now because I need to do a bit more research on. The wow, that, yeah, that's stream. yeah. But those weren't great revivals, so yeah. I don't see that well, like lighting up the toy aisles. Yeah, and then now we've been in military conflicts. I never since, figured that since out. Since I just, I just you know. so if you're a kid, you got real. You know, there's real military stuff happening, and so is it that it's the Watchmen explanation? Like in the world of of heroes, right. vigilantes, you don't have those exactly. Super, those you, have, comics. you have pirate comics. Com- yeah, right. honestly. So in a world of constant military action, now 
during the Vietnam War, G.I. Joe was around, but he was more of an adventure team. He wasn't a soldier the at that action point. Team, action team. Action yeah, team. Yeah, adventure team, I think. It was. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, rem- I, re- I remember as a kid when I was, like, babysat. Yeah. And uh, like the baby said, like she was like this old lady, but she had like her kids. They were grown up, but it's like it was this, the old set, like the what were they, twelve inch it was 12 tall inches, dolls? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was weird. So there, it might, it, and this is Atlas. I'm no, I'm no psychologist. I'm no, you know, I'm no. I, but I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, yeah. actually, because I've been talking to some people about it, and it, it's weird that it, it kind of ri- ebbs and flows with real military action. And it might be because this show fetishizes it a little bit. Oh, it does. It does. And oh, it. It, it, it it does. It, it, but I mean, you know, with uh, um, I, I always believe it has a positive message and, no, and, and a message there, it's of a, hey, it's better to solve it through peace and and you know, last resort and all that. But when you, the popularity of a project that might fetishize it, when you're then faced every night on the yeah. news with this is the real world post nine yeah. eleven and all that stuff. I can I, I, I kind of can see why it's it's not hugely yeah, popular. Yeah, you, you can't really sell a toy line where like the enemy is like in the like in the start of the of the GI Joe terrorists. These are that's an yeah. evil terrorist organization. You right. can't now you, can't, you now you can't no. say terrorist organization. No, you can't. I, I don't think that, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, any time it's been that like that sl- slogan's been used. You sometimes you'll see it it'll pop up on um you know in whatever media or promotional stuff. It's it's like Cobra. Military organization or something like evil that. Evil military. Like, yeah, yeah, evil. Yeah, evil. Like they don't. Right. So how do you how do you deal with terrorism? Yeah. You. They were terrorists, but well, yeah, not, that, 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 now they they they, they do terrorize. They you yeah. know like the episode where like uh, they use uh, all those restaurants, uh, like you know where they put the oh the, yeah, ro- yeah the, the, the red the, rocket the warheads yeah with with roadblocks. That, that's terror. That yeah. is terrorism. They, he was threatening like to like oh, unleash Armageddon. Hundred percent right. So, I think that's got. I think that that's got something to do with with hurting the brand a little bit. Can I just say this about that plan? Why did he have to show the the, the, the math? Wasn't that just pure hubris yeah, on the was, part? Yeah, you know. <laughs> he didn't well, no, was, that was one of the moments. That it wasn't that he showed it. Well, he it did. Was, he had the, the, well, he didn't. He didn't show them the map, did he? He did in the background, and then uh, in the background, and but then, he didn't point it out. It just was in the background I of think, his public. I think. I think he made, made like a like a passing wave of it. I thought. If all right, so if memories, it's been a while now. I've, it's I'm, it's. I'm watching it, these every. It's it's all it's, it's all blending it's all in my brain. Blur. I thought it was one of those things where they know they saw it. They saw his map of attack behind him on yeah. camera. He didn't point it out, well, but su- they saw it and they and said, "Hey, that matches this yeah. this red rocket chain." The red map. rocket. The red rocket chain. Yeah. Um. But that is another in the long line of of moments of hubris for Cobra Commander, where if he did not reach out and gloat. To the Joes, like every you know, like every plan he has, he'll call the Joes up, and be like, "Guess what I'm up to?" Yeah, and then they look at it and they figure it out. Whether it's the map behind them or the one with the dreadnoughts, where they see the human hand with the dreadnoughts are posing as aliens, <laughs> you know, like there's always something in the in the broadcast that that a Joe is like, "Come on, oh, dude, really? like, I don't know where he is." He's or the, the- like the the later on episode of like uh, the 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 the. the the, the Cobra Telethon. Oh, yeah, the Cobra Telethon, right? Like, there's always something where Cobra Commander shoots himself in the foot, which is why it's important, bringing it back to Serpentor, that Dr. Mindbender's like, we need a new leader. Because this guy's a chump. That, but the thing is, didn't Serpentor blow up, uh, screw up a lot more times, like in, in bigger ways? Well, before we project into the future, because uh, I'm not there yet. Okay, okay. And honestly, I'm, nope. I'm, 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 gotta I'm watching watch, We got to watch it. We got to watch it. Week, I'm so just I, going by what I remember right, watching. Right, right. I mean, certainly, yeah. It's not like all of a sudden they started winning a lot of battles. But, you know, he inspired confidence in his troops. That's true. He, he, he wasn't yelling retreat all the time. Yeah, that's true. You got to give you him know? that. You got to yeah. give him credit on that. You know, and eventually, Serpentor's creation leads to Cobra La. Oh, Buzz Dixon hates <laughs> that. <laughs> You know, if in case if you don't know who Buzz Dixon is, oh, he is oh, the story consultant. Yeah, and we talked about him on the and, show. And and he was forced to do this mini series. Like, uh, yeah, did you ever uh, go through like the whole discussion about like uh, of what happened? Yeah, he uh, he came up uh, with the story, which was going to be the explanation of the origin of Cobra. And he always wanted to say, it's like, okay, what is it that Cobra actually believes? Right. And so he wanted. He so he came up with this concept called the most dangerous man in the world. And the story would have gone where uh, G.I. Joe picks up communiques uh, from Cobra. Like, all these Cobra agents are mm-hmm. getting these messages. Yeah. 
cancel everything you're doing, report back to base or something, you know. And G.I. Joe's like wondering what the hell's happening. And then it turns out that Cobra is looking for this escapee who turns out to be the inspiration for Cobra Commander to create Cobra. Like how it started. It was supposed to be like a, a like this Nietzschean order. Okay. And so this and actually what you're describing, we'll actually table we'll button that for yeah. now because what you're describing, he wrote up in a um in a uh, Amazon Kindle yep. novel, uh, an e novel, as yeah. the, the young kids like to say. Uh, it's called the most dangerous man on yeah. uh, most dangerous man on earth or the most dangerous man on, on earth, earth or, or, or yeah, the, yeah, yeah something like that. It's Buzz Dixon. Yeah. It's Buzz Dixon. You should seek it out. I do plan a cover in that because I bought it. Yeah, I, I do plan a cover in that. Doing something, yeah. with, uh, something fun with that on on one of these episodes. Had I looked into Crystal Ball, knowing we were talking about it, we yeah. would have done it right now. But you know what? Yeah, no, maybe, no, no. You know what? Maybe we'll I think he, maybe I, we'll bring it up next week a little bit. Yeah, if not, like after, like you got, read it by the time of the movie because that leads to the whole. De- oh no, definitely, yeah, you know. definitely. We're gonna get to it before then. Yeah, there's actually a ton of uh, GI Joe ebooks out there. I can't vouch for how good some of them are or are not, but. If you do a search, if you're if you're unaware of this, man, go on Amazon and do a search for yeah. you know, G.I. Joe eBooks, and uh, you can expand your Joe knowledge. Well, with that, we're going to expand our Joe knowledge, Julius. Arise, Serpentor, uh, arise. Arise, Serpentor, arise. Arise, Part my four. creation. It's right here. Um, remember, if you're out there, you're on social media, you can find me at Joe and Joe Pod. You can send me an email to Joe and Joe Pod at gmail.com. We'll have you on the show. We do remote guests all the time. And uh, Julius, if we want to find you, they can just search for you on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. You're uh, a uh, you're, you're a heavy Facebook user. You're politically minded. You got some opinions you throw out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I get accused of uh, uh, like from everyone. Uh, you know, yesterday I was attacked by a Nazi. Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> with that, we're gonna get into the show. So here we go with Arise Serpentor, Arise Part Four. So here we go. Part four opens up. And Julius, you've got, you're long on some thoughts on the Conquest X-30. Yeah. Uh, how the, is, is that actually accurate? Can, uh, scientifically accurate. Can a, f- a jet fly with the wings that reversed? Well, that? you use the word scientifically accurate. So I'm going to say, listen, if the human centipede <laughs> is 100% scientifically accurate, then the Conquest, Conquest X-30 is 100% I scientifically I think the human accurate. centipede can be possible. <laughs> 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 I always thought as a kid, because yeah, that's a it's a cool looking design, like for sure. No, it's and a great it was a design. fun toy because it was the way they, they had those um, with the shark it, face. Yeah, with the shark face on it, and then the way just the size and everything, you could put your hand, and I got big hands, so but you could just put your hand on the back of it, and then you could navigate the whole plane. You know yeah. what I mean? Where like the Sky Striker usually took two hands to yeah. do. The Conquest was a big plane, but you could just use one hand to kind of kind of maneuver it around. Yeah, so Dr. we're going to get a recap right now, so let's listen in and see what happens. ...to replace Cobra Commander with a new leader, the Cobra Emperor, cloned from the DNA of long-dead conquerors. Dr. Mindbender then raided the tombs of Napoleon, Vlad Tepes, Ivan the Terrible, Alexander the Great, and others, but was thwarted in his pursuit of the DNA of the Chinese warlord Sun Tzu by Sergeant Slaughter. Dr. Mindbender vowed to substitute Sergeant Slaughter's own DNA for the missing specimen. But first, he made an all-out effort to secure the DNA of Genghis Khan. But Sergeant Slaughter, in an attempt to avenge his earlier defeat, was captured. Now, today's chapter of Arise, Serpentor, Arise. So exciting seeing Sergeant Slaughter just getting manhandled by a bunch of robots. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I, I, when, I, when I think of tactician. I, I think, think of, of tactician. You think of Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, yeah. So good. Um, so we, we touched on this briefly in the opening. Uh this show is completely it's a cobra show episode it's fantastic it's like the whole episode gi joe is barely in this episode um sergeant slaughter i i realized what his um acting style is like as i was reviewing (laughs) this one i really did he's always out of breath (laughs) that's that's the way the real sorry that's the way sarge mr slaughter played it yeah he was constantly out of breath every time <laughs> yeah i can't believe this mess hall food is so good you know like <laughs> that was it he was always out of breath you know maybe it's from from his wrestling days he was just so used to those uh well yeah you know? yeah yeah i mean yeah he's because it's like he's still doing a wrestling yeah. promo um this is an interesting story about sergeant slaughter and why 
I think that uh, Vince McMahon forced him to do that whole uh, program of where like he's a traitor. Yeah, yeah. It's because Sergeant Slaughter refused to give Vince McMahon a cut in the GI Joe deal. Really? That is what I read up on. That's fascinating. And we've talked about that, where they made him a bad guy, and then we ended up it actually was going punish. to war. It was punishment. And during the war, during the first Gulf War, Sergeant Slaughter was a bad guy. It, it was, was like, that's it, a bad it, look. It was punishment. Really? Well, yeah. good for him. Vince good. McMahon? No, good for Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, like, yeah. To not give him oh, yeah. a cut of the Joe oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sergeant Slaughter was Sergeant Slaughter before. Yeah. You know? And the thing is, Sergeant Slaughter, when he started, he was a heel. Right. You know, he like oh, he was the evil drill sergeant. Okay. What changed was the Iranian hostage, and so he became the symbol of America. Is that is that when that happened? He and and the Iron Sheik and the Iron Sheik would uh, do shows. Mm-hmm. You know, to sell. Right. You know, and Iron Sheik was you know he was himself he's threatened the by the Iranian. He's the best. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he's oh. His Twitter is awesome. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know if that's actually him doing it though. I've heard that it's not. I, I but think, either way, I, I think it's his his agent. I think he endorses it though. Yeah, it's oh, just so crazy. I, I I think half the time they just give him a script and then they just he just says it. Yeah. Um, oh, here it is. So we are very close to seeing the culmination of Doctor Mindbender's um, DNA. Growth experiments. I here. love like how they're they're bringing in like like a coffin, like some it's like yeah, it's, it's like a, Dracula. It's like a big inside. growth tube, and inside there's oh, you know what else he looks like? He looks like Meatwad. <laughs> that's a hundred percent what he, this, well, he does this, have the Meatwad face. Yeah, that's a hundred percent what this creature looks like, <laughs> Meatwad. Uh, we have maybe that's the secret origin of the Aqua Teen Hunger it Force. They were the could be. <laughs> it could be right now uh, for observation purposes. We have pulled out. My original Serpentor. Oh, this is so classic. Yep. Uh, if you see the um, the cape has been um, not so subtly repaired with uh, some sewing. You can only do what you can. Yeah, because it with tore these at both shoulder points. So I had, yeah. to, I had my mom sew it up for me. Yeah. Uh, but oh, it that's, is, she, that's a cool mom. Well, yeah, come on. My mom would have said, like, yeah, you know. No, she's, no, no, she's, she's a great she mom. Was, but, my mom was down with you. She bought yeah. me all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I had a... I had a, I had a uh, you know, you I, had a, I had an allowance, but I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't Teddy Warbucks. You know, you know, probably ninety five percent of my Joe stuff was bought by my mom. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, but he looks good though, right? Yeah, so I still have his dagger and the snake that came with him. Yeah, and his airship. That is a gr- that is a great way to travel. It really is. You have your own personal airship. Come on. Although the movie makes a good point of like why you shouldn't wear a cape. And fly on a hovercraft. <laughs> well, fl- fl- that's you were talking about from uh, from the, Incredibles. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, but like, but specifically, he, this is a. Let's look at his. Let's look at his his air skiff. This is has a hovercraft wind wind thing that's keeping it aloft, right? Yeah. One, it's only in the back of it. Oh, here's the it's, pill. The either the he's yeah. uh, Cobra Commander is now Cobra Tony Commander a scrap just iron. introduced. I'm gonna sabotage. Yeah, he introduced some sabotage, or or do you say sabotage? Sabotage. He, he introduced some sabotage into Doctor Mindbender's plan. So uh, you know, so and we then, know something's gonna go wrong. I love the idea that this muck is staying still together. <laughs> and not leaking. Yeah, it's, it's like, just <laughs> well, you know, it's like dough. You know, it's like it's like a big wad of meat. Yeah, it's really, what it is. But you're right. There's no. It's not juicy. There's no. You know, like it's it's not. It should it should still be in a, a. You know what? Here's the thing. I think this is more realistic of a creation of of an artificial life than in uh, Superman four when like uh, like Lex Luthor puts like the genetic material um, in a. This in a, is in almost. A box. You know what? First of all, it's almost the same origin from <laughs> Superman four, and secondly, except those, Superman doesn't toss. Well, them. wait a minute. Those DNA collectors. <laughs> yeah. They look a little bit like that thing that soup can that Luthor <laughs> sent into the sun. You know. Remember Remember oh, I remember. The, yeah, they don't look too far from the DNA collectors on this. I wonder, if, I wonder if the writers were somehow sharing notes. I doubt it. <laughs> but, um, oh, there's Tomax so and Zamos. The, in the Frankenstein moment. The other thing about this scene, they're not exactly operating in a clean room. No, they're not. Like you, you would think <laughs> that he's a he's it's a professional. Awfully exposed. Yeah. It's like you know. It's like yeah. So, so when something something goes wrong, spoiler alert, in this first try. Oh, I wouldn't be too surprised because you're operating, you know, in like a really filthy environment. Yeah. Sergeant Slaughter has escaped. Quiet, like if I was Serpentor, I would say it's like, wait, you created me in this mess? Yeah, yeah. So the um, 
the 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 oh. vacuum shroud. That's what. He oh, okay. Well, you know what? He, he did at least use a vacuum shroud on it, which is important. <laughs> uh, so Mindbender uh, commands his creature to rise, oh, and there he, he is, is. Meatwad. But he also he looks like that dude from First Family. He looks like some. Def- yeah, like and it's n- and it is a monster, thing. and he's choking out Doctor Mindbender, and he is a really. It's a comic night- booky Kirby looking thing, and we're going to commercial with Doctor Mindbender about to be done eaten <laughs> by his own petard. <laughs> Today's file card features on the GI Joe Tracker, codenamed Spirit. His file name is Charlie Iron Knife, and his primary military specialty is the infantry. His secondary military specialty is social services. His birthplace is Taos, New Mexico. Spirit comes from a family so far below the poverty line that they never realized they were poor was a hunting guide throughout high school. He served in Southeast Asia, that would be Vietnam, then, as a civilian, completed his education. He returned to the service for reasons inexplicable to anyone but a Native American mystic warrior. He's a qualified expert in the M16, M19, 11A1 auto pistol and the Remington sniper rifle. Charlie is a shaman, a medicine man. He's not a healer or a priest or a witch doctor. There isn't any equivalent in our culture for what he is unless we had shrinks that could actually help people. I love Spirit. He came with the bird Freedom. He was a huge part of the first season of G.I. Joe. He was sort of on the cartoon. He was sort of a snake eyes surrogate. I feel like he's been underused in almost every incarnation. I'll say this about Spirit. There's certainly a couple things about his about his character that might be a little stereotypical. That could be up for debate, but we are dealing with a children's toy. And for in that regard... He was a hero. He was pretty awesome. His gun was great. Don't even get me started on Freedom. Freedom, this huge American eagle uh, that in the cartoon would listen to his commands and go where he needed them to go. He was great. He always had the right answer. Uh, Larry Hama used him really cool in the comic book where he would, he was actually the like human guard post at the pit. He would just sit out and, and meditate at night in the desert and he was the outlook. So there was nothing else in the desert. This is when the pit was underground. There was no one else in the desert but Spirit. And he was communing with the land to see if there was any bad guys on their way. He's awesome. I'm a big fan of Charlie Iron Knife. I hope he's a character that they use in one of the big screen movies. I think he'd be pretty dope. Give him a big old American Eagle, like a CG Eagle. That'd be great. So Spirit, Charlie Iron Knife, Yahe, and we salute you. That's a good question. <laughs> when the monster eats mine better, will he chew up the will cod piece? Will he chew piece? the cod piece? Or will he spit it out? You know, you you got you, uh, you and uh, Stephanie, were, uh, was it Amber uh, last week's episode? Mm-hmm. You made great comment about like how he's wearing those tassels. Oh, he's got a look, man. He's got a real I, solid I, look. I, 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 I think I've seen it in, 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 in certain Brazilian movies. Oh, that- boy. Oh, boy. And- <laughs> That's all we're going to have to say That's about that. That's all I'm going to have to say. Let's just check, uh, let's just check Julius's browser history <laughs> and delete, 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 delete. Well, this monster is going oh, nuts. He's, he's it, nuts. It really does. It looks like a cross between like the Man Thing and uh, the the Thing from the Fantastic Four and Meatwad. Yeah, it's like if the Thing and Meatwad fell in sweet, sweet love. This is what you this would is, get. This is what you get. Yeah. He is also, uh, this is funny, usually the twins, when they get attacked, it's like one at a time, yeah. so they show the other twin. This guy just cuts to the chase, and he attacks both of them <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, Cobra story. Commander locks them in the room. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a coward. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. No. Cobra Commander, you're not smart enough. Nope. Oh, Destro. Destro is always telling the truth. He is the, he is always down with the truth with Cobra Commander. Yeah, he's always like, "You just screwed up, and here's how you did." But like, you would figure he wants to keep his job. This is his organization. Well, no, it's not just what well, you mean, Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Of course he does. But then, you know, just like a certain dictator we know, why wouldn't he just fire Mindbender? Yeah. Oh, because it would cause too much trouble. But even because still- everyone would say, "Oh, you're firing him because he's getting too close to creating an emperor to supplant you." What? Yeah, it wonder may- where we're seeing that. Yeah, but this is just even much more weirder because Mindbender is a brand new guy. He totally is. There's a line in this episode. It's funny you mentioned that. There is a line in this episode where he says something like, uh, "I've had enough of this" or whatever. And I'm thinking, dude, you just joined. You've had enough of this? Yeah. These guys have been through this for oh, for fifty some episodes. <laughs> the secret origin of Doctor Mindbender, because you were talking about like uh, how he was a dentist. He was a dentist. He invented this uh, 
this machine that was supposed to like you know like the whole it was a weird concept he, it, was, it was a machine that was supposed to numb your senses so like when you get surgery right right it would and like it ended up altering it altered, it his altered his, yeah so altered doc, his so bra- dr right. mindbender is, made him is crazy. the evil version right. mm-hmm. although with a name like mindbender well, I wonder if that's his, his God-given name. I think it is. <laughs> that's a little. <laughs> hey, honey. I think he looks I, like a mind bender. Honey, I think we might. We maybe should change our name before we. Uh, before we. Uh, oh, here it. it is. Here's the. Uh, w- 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 what, what, what is this well, new uh, chopper called? Well, that's the Swamp Fire. That's, that's the Dreadnought Swamp Fire. Swamp fire. But the, the the Joe Chopper. That's the. Um, uh, that's the tomahawk, that's which tomahawk. Is, is an amazing toy. The Swamp Fire was cool too. Yeah, Swamp Fire gave them some versatility. It was a little too neon green for my yeah. taste, but uh, it was a cool the start toy. of the neon green. Now it's funny. So we are halfway into the second pure action. Halfway into the second commercial break, and this is only like the second scene that actually has GI Joes in it. Yeah, you know? I love it. It's pure yeah, action. It's, it's just all pure cobra action. action. Although, what is a a guy whose specialty is in the Arctic I was just doing point that out. In, 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 a, in a swamp infested, you know? Because he was a new character that they had to sell. Oh, of course. Because Cat. Frostbite, uh, Frostbite yes. was new, so they had to sell him. Uh, Scrap oh, 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 oh. shows up. Which we were, so we were talking a little bit off mic about this, uh, Cardinal Sin and Podcasting, but we did it. Um, Scrap Iron kind of fills the role of Major Blood. Yeah, like he really replaces how they had Major Blood playing in the first. He doesn't. First he doesn't season. show up as much. I don't until well, like the so movie. I think he's, he's was he in the movie. I think he was in the movie. Yeah, but he definitely. I mean, Major Blood took the back seat in the first season. Period. Yeah. Let a, now, now he, there's hardly going to be any room for Major Blood in uh, this season if he shows up at all. You know what? He got fired. But Scrap Iron totally I, takes I, his place. I think he got fired when Cobra Commander was reading his he poetry did in the comic books. Well, yeah. Well, no, he did. Like that's they wrote that that the reason you, he dropped out of the scene. Oh, he got fired. Is, yeah, he got fired. Like he went off on his own, <laughs> and then they eventually brought him back. I think with like the um, the Devil's Do stuff is when they. Okay, him yeah. Back. But they yeah. said like he had fallen under, he had fallen uh, like out of favor with Cobra Commander, so he's probably read him because he was a mercenary. Probably read his poetry. <laughs> oh my god! No, there's a great. Oh, I know his poetry. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like he's a, a poet. Baroness yeah. like makes fun of his poetry. Uh huh. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a poet. <laughs> So Sergeant Slaughter, he's uh, he escaped from the compound, and he is having a field day whipping on some vipers. However, the monster is having know them. Yeah, he doesn't know the monsters out there. Oh, he totally. just now met the monster. Well, you know that it tech. So in a way, technically, that's Sergeant Slaughter's son, because it's from his it DNA. Kind of is. You're kind of right. So he's finding his own son. Okay, real quick, he just called him Poindexter, which is a nerd slur. Right? Yeah. It's and, Sergeant Slaughter. He'll just say. And I'm gonna say this monster, furthest thing from a Poindexter. Yeah. So we're gonna go into commercial pondering how Poindexter is this monster. There it is, man. Cobra Island. And in the Phantom, we're invisible to their radar. Nobody needs the It's an attack. There's nothing on the radar. Cut off the box, you fool. But the rolling thunder rules the land. Yo, yo! Nobody beats the actor, the real American hero. Will Cobra Island be Cobra's last stand? Find out in Marvel Comics. Now back to G.I. Joe. Okay, with, Poindexter. With, yeah, with Poindexter being a, you know, a, 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 an 80s slur to make fun of a nerd. Yeah. That, you know, the quote, cool guys used. Because you're a point. Don't be a Poindexter, right? Yeah. How is this guy? How does this creature personify the concept of Poindexter? You just ju- you just let it go because it's Sergeant Slaughter saying it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, that's Sergeant Slaughter's favorite move the 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 oh, he, over toss slam. He done just broke that monster's neck. Oh, that was what yeah. He did. <laughs> and I, like, look at how he's like holding the monster. Because that monster's dead, and that monster just decayed into. Yeah. It's a little reminiscent of um the um uh. Synthoids yeah. that Cobra used in multiple episodes, where they would make m- most specifically the Memories of Mara episode, where Shipwreck was uh, yeah, that living was in the town and everyone was my a personal favorite episode. Such a good episode. I, that Such is a good that episode. is where you see Cobra really truly yeah, evil. So good. Um, so this is a little bit of Synthoid callback. So I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. you know they used some of that technology to just do this period. Yeah. Um, but so that monster, Muck Monster, he devolved into nothingness, and now. 
Slaughter does get recaptured by Cobra. Yeah. Although, but I mean, he's not going out without a fight. Or maybe he's not. No, he got captured. He got captured. Oh, he got captured. Yeah. I love it. Creeps you know, one, Slaughter. You know, uh, my, my friend, uh, Nas, back in high school, we were talking about Sergeant Slaughter. And it's like, they really do compliment Sergeant Slaughter in this cartoon. Because, like, if you see him in real life, it's like, even back then, when, like, you know, when he was performing as a wrestler, mm-hmm. nothing. Oh, yeah. Like, no, he was one of those old school, just built stocky. Yeah. Not muscular, not super yeah. strong, like, not he had really a gut. athletic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely was that kind yeah. of wrestler. But there's. There was something to be said for that, you know? Like, that was fun, yeah. you know, back in the day. Because he was still bigger than normal. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There was a time, better. speaking of, like, wrestlers and, and, and real people G. coming into, into, the, into GHO, um, the Chicago Bears had William the Refrigerator Perry, yeah. right? And he became a Joe member. He was considered enormous. And you look at him now and you're like, oh, yeah, obviously he was a fat dude. He's he would be he wouldn't be able to play today in the no, NFL. No. At that oh, he's size. small. He no, yeah. no, no. It's so crazy. Yeah. Now he was he actually was a really talented ball player. Well, it's like a Dick Butkus and all those guys right. from like the uh, late sixties and early seventies. There's no way. Yeah, they just you look. Yeah, you look at their bodies and you're just like, oh, okay, but Hi, but they guys, were intense. Uh, they played good ball. Yeah. So I think that's what's hard. I was wondering if I could. Uh, um, this is fun. <laughs> but you know what's amazing? They're sending sending lifeline in to uh, distract the Vipers. Soldiers like during World War II, like when you think it's like, oh, they're not as good shape. No, they were in great shape. If you see some of those old oh, newsreels, yeah. they were, oh, sure. they could do a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, I think people were in better shape then, but not when I say better shape, I don't, I mean like Mu- now, super like muscular. That super, yeah, that super ripped out, super cut because now, oh, uh, here, not, the now when jo- you see wrestlers, they're, they're more is, bodybuilders. G.I. Joe is just infiltrated. Oh, yeah. Lifeline, the pacifist, which yeah. I wonder is like how. A pacifist joins up the the top, and I think Lifeline had a holster on his figure. I think he had a gun holster. Yeah, that's like a ridiculous thing. <laughs> yeah. Now in, 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 in the cart in in the toy, did they did they say he was a pacifist? Yeah, he also? was. Yeah, it's on his card. Yeah, it's on his card. So it was, it was definitely always a part of at least post plastic. It was always a part of it. So I have a feeling they didn't know he was going to be now, a pacifist. Now is that a is, is that a line. lightsaber Mindbender is holding? Um, <laughs> it's either a lightsaber or a magic wand. <laughs> I, 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 I'm hoping it's it's either that because with the way he's dressed up, I don't, you know. Well, uh, they are now. They finally they put Sergeant Slaughter's DNA in there, which uh, this time no, when the DNA when they took the DNA from all the dead bodies, the dead bodies like disappeared. Yeah, they got destroyed. Sergeant Slaughter, no ill effects. No, no. Couple of commanders chastising him. Here's a bit of a tidbit for those of you who don't know. In the comic book. Uh, the, the 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 living specimen they use to not Sergeant Slaughter. It's not Sergeant Slaughter. It is Storm, Storm Shadow. Shadow. Yes, and that because was he's the, the perfect soldier. Because he's well, yeah, and that was the mechanism that. Well, no, 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 no. He accidentally fell in. It wasn't used. No, I think they they they. Oh no, they, no, they, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. He, he was, was totally de- right. Yeah, he was dead. He was. Yeah, it was the mechanism they used to revive him. Yeah. They, oh, okay. Because he. That's how they brought him back to life. Okay. That's what it was. No, they, they didn't use the ninja. The comic books just are, yeah, get, read yeah. the comic books. No, 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 no. He really was dead. He was a dead body. Yeah. But when they dumped him into the vat, that revived okay. him. Okay. He came to life. He woke up on Cobra Island after yeah. the assault on Cobra Island, and he was like, "Where yeah. am I? What am I doing?" Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, oh, here, oh, Cobra Commander is making a deal with Sergeant Slaughter. Yep. He's gonna get Sergeant Slaughter He's out. Free Sarge. Destroy the creation of Serbentor, and. You know, yeah. So oh, yeah. basically, yeah. So, so Cobra Commander is responsible for Sarge escaping, and they're waiting for the uh, Frankenstein-like experiment to uh, to revive their second, hopefully successful attempt. Tomax and Zayma. Go suck eggs, Sergeant Slaughter. Now he's breaking. Now we know that. Now we know why uh, why Serbentor is not a good leader. Because he, he just has his Sergeant own, he Slaughter's broke. tactical genius. Yeah. But he he screwed up. Yeah, he screwed it up. So that's the only reason. That's the only reason that Cobra did not go on to dominate the planet uh, is because right there, Sergeant Slaughter broke his own DNA bank. And then we would all be under the the, the we the, would be the, under the, 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 the thumb, heel of the Cobra, heel, the boot heel of Serpentor. This I command. You know, here's a question I always wonder. He's he's given Destro like a oh wedgie, like a noogie he, wedgie. The, the noogie is like, <laughs> did I see this in high school? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, so, uh, you see, oh, oh he's oh, he just he, done dented his hat. My, yeah, 
That's great. <laughs> he headbutts <laughs> Scrap Knocks Iron. Out scrap Iron with a headbutt. So good. Never mess with a the wrestler. They're mean. No, they are. And there's there's the there's the title of the show. Arise, oh, yeah. Serpent or Arise. Arise, most oh. powerful one. Arise. Arise. And will we will we get it? I don't know. Is it gonna work? Well, it's not working so far. Cobra Commander's loving it. Bender, Bender. I would call him Gender Bender with the way he's dressed up. Yeah, pretty much. Wait, 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 real quick though. Look at Mind Bender standing right next to Sergeant Slaughter. He's as they're, they're the negative. They're the negative. What's happening? They're the inverse. They're really? look at them. Yeah. The, the inverse parts of their flesh are showing. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh yeah! It's like someone drew one of them, and then they, oh, they, here's, they, uh, oh, oh, it. I love this, the sound this of is spirits. So exciting! Let's listen. Destined to conquer. Let those who fear me follow me. Let those who oppose me die. For I am Serpentor, and this I command. Dick so Gautier. The introduction Good. of Dick Gautier you as Serpentor. And Cobra Commander plots to regain control of his organization. Then the Joes hurl themselves into combat against Serpentor to save Washington, D.C. All in the next exciting episode of Arise, Serpentor, <laughs> Arise. Oh, my God. It's the all it's so good. It's all Serpentor hour. It is the whole episode is Cobra and Joe. It's all Cobra. It's a great episode yeah, it's because it's just pure, like, you know, it, it again, it's just Cobra. You go through this machination. Cobra Commander wants to, like, just do away with this whole plot to get that he would lose his job. Yeah. It's just all, all internal Cobra politics is what we just watched. But you know what? Like, he's dealt with this before with the others, like from Baroness and the Corsican twins. Well, yeah, but they were never a credible threat because those guys are goofy. You know what I mean? Like, he always, he knew, he knows the weakness, he knows the weakness of all the other characters, right? He knows, like, where the bodies are buried, whatever. Here, he's dealing with a brand new, seemingly perfect uh, contender to the throne. Well, here's the thing. How did Mindbender get a job for Cobra? And well, like, he, he brought the bats to Cobra. Oh, he brought, oh, he, so yeah, he I think it's in the comic books. I can't, they don't touch on it in the show. But um, wow, he's he, a smart. he brings oh yeah he's and a he, smart dude. He was a dentist and he creates yeah. fuck, he, he creates he, brings, this, he creates these these robots. He brings the battle android trooper Whoa. technology to Cobra. So that's that's what got him his that's what got him his job. I've never made fun of mine. I mean, I, I, we're teasing him on the show. I always liked him. I always thought Doctor Mind Bender was pretty cool as a toy. It's he's dressed ridiculous, but, but the, the stuff he's in the tassel yeah, right. But the stuff he does, the stuff he's up to, is like sinister and just just wicked. But um, but it's Julius, I'm so happy to have you on this. Episode. I'm happy to be here. I love this. Uh, episode. This was great. This was a lot I of love, fun. I love the ending. Sir Bento rises as this I command. Totally, man. And you're just like, and he looks like he's like Steve Rogers ripped up when he just got out of the secret Sol- the super soldier <laughs> serum. You know, like that's what it was like. Who like, would it was win? Like Chris Evans busting out. You know and be what, like, ah. You know, good question. Here, here's a question. Who would win? Sir Bento or Captain America? It's a great it's a great question because ostensibly they're both the ultimate soldier. Yeah. The ultimate tactician. And one's evil, one's good. Perfect um, matchup. It would be a really good matchup. Actually. I'm surprised they never did like a Marvel G.I. Joe crossover. Because they've done Marvel Transformers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was saying a few episodes back, and no one out there, listeners, no one took me up on this. I wanna see I wanna see a dr- I wanna see a snake eyes. Uh, showdown with uh, Batman? Wolverine. Oh, Wolverine is what I want to see. I want to see Snake Eyes oh. and Wolverine going at it, and, and yeah, would, that's yeah, what I want to see. I, I, you That'd know what, be amazing. You know what? You have to arm uh, Snake Eyes with like uh, with adamantium blades. Well, he yeah, he would have yeah, he would he has yeah, to have yeah, the, yeah, the adamantium yeah, yeah. blades. But he would like he would do all those crazy cuts where like he cuts them and Wolverine doesn't even know he's cut, and yeah. then and then his arm just falls off, you know, and he has to can, grow can, it back. Can adamantium cut through adamantium. Well, if Snake Eyes wields it, I don't know. Hey, here's a good uh, listen. So this this show is coming out the uh, final weeks of May, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, hey Joe and Joe listeners, guess what I saw? I saw the movie Wonder Woman. Boom! We saw oh, a sneak preview of it. How was that movie? It's amazing. Everyone go out and see it. Was Everyone it, with an earshot go out and see it. Was it unlike the other DC movies? It is. Yes. You, you've seen my criticism. Yeah, it's unlike the other DC movies because it's really really good. 
It's so good. No. But one of the moments. No Snyderism? No. One of the moments she has is she's, uh, there's this take place during World War One. Yeah. There's a whole room full of generals and that's a, colonels That's, a, that's and inventive. I would have thought they would have stuck yeah, with the World War Two. There's a whole II. room full of colonels and generals and stuff. And Wonder Woman gets in this guy's face and she goes, where I come from, the generals are on the front line with their soldiers getting shot at. You're no general, blah, blah, blah. That's what Serpentor does. Yeah. That's 100% what Serpentor well, does. Napoleon, uh, like, Short. Th- 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 he he did, um, like, he did inspire. Like, he was there in yeah. the front line. I saw it in Bill and, and Ted's. He went down the, he went down the water yeah. slide. And he like, went down the water slide. He did uh, not say, you go down the water slide first. He was he there. He said, I'm going down the water that's slide why, first. That's why, that's that's what that's Napoleon why when did. he came back from Elba they they you know like by this time they brought back the monarchy but they said you know what no we want to follow you yeah. he, he was yeah, yeah, yeah. he was the original serpentor awesome and imagine well, he's the a part of yeah. he's a part of serpentor he's one yeah. of the guys they got his they they, they took his you know DNA. Here, you know what here's the thing about like last last week's episode where were the chinese army <laughs> when, when they tried to take sun Tzu's? <laughs> they were too busy uh they were too busy running with people over in tiananmen Square. oh that's right it's the 80s yeah <laughs> well julius thank you so much for being on joe and joe i feel very honored being here i'm thank so you, glad joe. we finally got around to it I- i'm really happy to have you on this I, was a I, great I really episode. do love this episode we didn't really touch upon a, a whole lot of it as much excuse me are you critiquing I I'm critiquing the, the, the quality of my show no, as I'm, you're on I'm the show? I'm critiquing myself. I'm critiquing myself. I think we touched on it quite a bit. You did? Yeah. Are you All kidding right. me? I think I need to watch it again. Half, <laughs> well, then, you know what? <laughs> the episode drops every Wednesday, so tune in and watch it again and record your own I think I will. Commentary. I'm going to talk to myself. <laughs> so thank you very much. I love the show. Thank Joe you. on Joe, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, listeners. I really, really, really appreciate it. And the show is growing every week. Thank you for sharing. That means you guys are out there sharing it with your friends and telling people. Because I certainly don't have any marketing budget, Julius. Oh, I, so that means no, people no, are telling no. people. That's and good. I love it. It's like the opposite of Fight Club. The only rule of Joe and Joe is tell your friends. Tell your friends. Find me on Facebook, Joe and Joe Pod, Gmail, Twitter, all that stuff. And remember, next week, part five, we get to the, the big culmination. I'm so excited. The Battle of Washington, D.C. And now you, Joe, and Joeing is half the battle. I love this. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.